As promised at the beginning of the semester, we've now discussed topics in each of these boxes, except for this last box up here in the upper right, which is partial differential equations. Partial differential equations is the subject of the last module of this course. In this first lecture video, we'll provide an overview of partial differential equations, introducing some notation and definitions. In subsequent videos, we'll talk about solution methods for different types of partial differential equations, including elliptic PDEs, parabolic PDEs, and hyperbolic PDEs. Partial differential equations frequently arise when modeling chemical and biological phenomena. For example, when modeling transport phenomena, we talked about the transport of this extensive quantity per unit mass psi hat. The accumulation of psi hat in some control volume is described by a derivative with respect to time, while the advective and diffusive transports are described by derivatives with respect to position. These partial derivatives are both first order, but when we parameterize the flux term, capital J sub x, we often end up formulating second order partial differential equations. If rho psi hat is a concentration of component A, for example, then capital J sub x, the flux term, might be related to a diffusion coefficient times a gradient in concentration. Since that gradient is a derivative in x, when we substitute j into dj dx up here, we get a second derivative. Similarly, when modeling heat transfer, the thermal energy flux term, q, might be substituted in for capital J sub x. And the thermal energy flux might be described by Fourier's law of heat conduction, which is a derivative in temperature. Substituting the derivative in temperature in here would give us a second order PDE. Partial differential equations must have a dependent variable that is a function of at least two independent variables, such as time and position, or position in two different coordinates. An example of a PDE that has a dependent variable t that depends on two independent variables, in this case t and x, is shown here. The order of a PDE is the highest order of any partial derivative that appears in the equation. This definition is analogous to the order of ODEs that you're already familiar with. Linear PDEs have only linear terms of the dependent variable and its partial derivatives. Again, this is analogous to the definition of linearity with respect to ODEs. The dimension of a PDE usually refers to the number of spatial dimensions that are independent variables. That is, we don't count time when counting the dimension of a PDE. So according to the definitions here, classify the order, the linearity, and the dimension of this partial differential equation. You can pause the video while you think about it. The order of this PDE is 2, because this has a second derivative with respect to position. This PDE represents a linear combination of derivatives of t and is therefore a linear PDE. The dimension, remember, is the number of spatial dimensions, so we don't count time, and this PDE has only one dimension. x is the only independent spatial coordinate. When writing PDEs, the methods textbook frequently uses a notation for the partial derivatives in which the dependent variable is written with the independent variable of the partial derivative as a subscript. So the partial of u with respect to x is simply u sub x, and the partial derivative of u with respect to y is written u sub y. Second order partial derivatives, we add multiple subscripts. So the second partial derivative of u with respect to x is u sub xx, x, and the partial derivative of u with respect to x and y is u sub xy. Linear second order PDEs with respect to two independent variables, x and y, that have constant coefficients can be written this way, where we define the coefficient of the u sub xy term as 2 times b. If we use this notation to write linear second order PDEs, where of course this function f here must be a linear function of u, u sub x, and u sub y in order to maintain the linearity of this PDE, then we can classify the PDE according to whether it is elliptic, parabolic, or hyperbolic. For elliptic PDEs, b squared minus ac is less than zero. For parabolic PDEs, b squared minus ac is equal to zero. And for hyperbolic PDEs, b squared minus ac is greater than zero. 
Classifying the PDE according to this taxonomy helps us to choose the solution method that we will use to numerically solve the PDE. How do we get these kind of second order PDEs? Well, we have to have a dependent variable that varies in two spatial coordinates. Consider again our heat transfer in the fin. Previously, we had heat transfer only in the x direction. And we used as a boundary condition that the temperature at the wall was constant for all values of what we'll now call the y coordinate. But if the temperature of the wall varies along the y dimension, and the heat transfer is occurring along the x dimension, then we expect that the temperature of a location inside the fin should be dependent on both x and y. And the accumulation of thermal energy at that point inside the fin is related to the conduction in both the x and y directions. Let's classify some common second order PDEs that you might encounter. The first one we call Poisson's equation. Poisson's equation contains no partial derivative with respect to both x and y. But the sum of the second derivatives of u with respect to x and with respect to y are equal to some function of x and y. The way it's written here, a and c are both equal to 1 and 2b is equal to 0. Therefore, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. A special case of Poisson's equation is the homogeneous form, which we call Laplace's equation. You might also encounter the 1d heat equation. We've already seen an example of this, and simplifying the 1d heat equation, we can write it as the first partial derivative of the dependent variable with respect to time is equal to some coefficient multiplied by the second derivative of u with respect to x. While this is called the heat equation because it describes heat transfer in one dimension, it also describes mass transfer in one dimension and momentum transfer in one dimension. The, the wave equation looks similar to the heat equation, but in fact it's very different because the left hand side is a second partial derivative with respect to time. Poisson's equation and Laplace's equation are both examples of elliptic PDEs because a and c are equal to 1 while 2b is equal to 0. Notice there is no partial derivative with respect to x and y in either of these equations. The heat equation is an example of a parabolic equation. In this case both 2b and c are equal to 0. So since 2b is equal to 0 and c is equal to 0, b squared minus ac is also equal to 0. And the wave equation can be written as a hyperbolic PDE. Again, b is 0. The a term, which multiplies u sub tt, and the c term, which multiplies u sub xx, have opposite sign. So when multiplied together, minus ac is greater than 0. And the wave equation becomes hyperbolic. You can answer the question, what is the dimension of each of these example second order PEEs. In the next video, we'll introduce a method for solving Poisson's equation and Laplace's equation.